Do you have an elderly Boston Terrier and you're kind of worried about maybe the health issues that are going to pop up or how best to care for your Boston once it reaches a senior status? In this episode, I'm actually going to be talking to Dr. Monica Tarantino. She's the founder of SeniorDogRevolution.com and she's going to be walking us through how best to care for our Boston Terriers once it reaches this elderly stage. Coming up. <music> Everybody. Welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of BostonTerrierSociety.com. And like I said before, we're going to actually talk to Dr. Monica Tarantino. She's the founder of Senior Dog Revolution. She has a podcast and a website that's geared to basically helping all senior dog owners give their dog the best life they possibly can in their elderly age. She's going to be talking specifically about the Boston Terrier breed, and she's actually created an amazing resource for us. It's in the show notes below to check out, kind of highlighting the health issues with the breed and just some best practices once they reach their elderly status. Without further ado, let's get in with the show. Hey, Dr. Tarantino, thank you so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel and basically talking about senior dogs. Before I get into the questions related just to Boston Terriers, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself, just the reason why you care for senior dogs so much? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. I'm a veterinarian in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been a vet for about six years now, and I have a real interest in senior dogs. And this interest actually came around after I had my own senior dog, who was a West Highland Terrier named Frodo Baggins Tarantino. And, <laughs> and I had to take care of Frodo. And I realized that as I was kind of taking care of him through his senior years, that he had such different needs than he had when he was younger and just an adult Westie. I really took a huge interest in seniors after that because I want to make sure that the needs that they have are met. And a lot of people actually don't know about the different needs that seniors actually have. They're just a really special group to me. Is every dog breed different? Like when they reach senior status? Like when would a Boston Terrier reach senior status? They're all pretty different. We know that large breed dogs age a lot faster than small breed dogs like Boston Terriers. Boston Terriers, you know, they're very active. They're very intelligent dogs. They probably hit their senior status at about age seven or eight years of age. That's honestly, I think that's really surprising for a lot of Boston Terrier owners because they're still yeah. really spunky. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Bella was probably really kind of spunky and active and still kind of just had like, yeah. you know, a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now age. she's just lazy. <laughs> yeah. She's laying <laughs> there in the corner. They're usually seniors about seven or eight years of age. And there's different degrees of like senior status. So I actually have a book that I'm writing right now, but I actually classify seniors in three different categories. And this is really important. A lot of people feel like when their dogs are age seven or eight, that they're actually not seniors, but they are. Mm -hmm. I consider them early seniors. And when they're early seniors, what they're going through is they're mostly healthy. So if you do routine blood work on them every year, they're mostly healthy. They may have one medical condition just kind of starting, right? And it might be, maybe she's a little bit slower to jump in the car. Maybe she can't jump as high as she used to. Maybe it's something that you just actually can't tell, okay? But they're, what's happening is that physiologically, they are having aging processes occurring inside their body at that age. Mm -hmm. And then after the early senior status, they go into like the middle senior, which is they definitely have at least one medical condition going on for them at that age, you can tell they're a senior at this age, whether it's a gray muzzle or they walk a little bit slower, but you can mm -hmm. see it, but they're still mostly healthy. They just probably have one medical condition, maybe two. That's Bella at this time. That's like it was around Bella, nine, yeah. the nine year mark, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's like a middle senior. And then you've got, and I call them the super seniors. And mm -hmm. super seniors are these geriatrics. It's just like another word for them. I like to call them super seniors because I think it's nicer. And to be <laughs> honest, uh -huh. I'm really impressed with them because these are the guys that have made it. They are old. <laughs> they have arthritis. They have probably multiple health issues going on, but they're still trucking along and we're able to manage them, you know, still well at that age. And so those are the geriatrics, the guys that are probably maybe they get wagons or like stroller rides down the street a little bit, but they're, they've right. made it like they've arrived. <laughs> There's different categories of seniors, but truly you start out being a senior at about for Boston Terriers, about age seven or eight. Once they start to reach this beginning senior status, are there like health concerns that the Boston Terrier breed, at least that you've seen in your clinic, 
that maybe owners should be watching for at this point? There's two big things that I think start happening to start happening with Boston's that we can start watching out for. And that's going to be dental disease. You want to, yeah, yeah. And I know you just mentioned that Bella was going to have her dental done, I think in the next week or two, Mm -hmm. they'll start having things like rotten teeth and diseased teeth come up. And so getting those dental cleanings and extractions if needed is really important for their health. If you can get in the habit of brushing their teeth at home, that's fantastic too. That can be helpful. That's not going to help treat a rotten tooth. And it's Mm -hmm. not going to replace a dental cleaning, but it can Mm -hmm. definitely be really helpful for them. The other thing besides dental disease is arthritis. I feel like arthritis is one of those things that's really difficult to pick up on in a seven or eight year old Boston because they're still zipping around. I mean, for Bella, like hers, it's in the winter time. Like if she's sitting around and this is the only way we've noticed it. If she's laying down and then I'm like, all right, let's go outside. Like one of her legs will get stuck. Oh, pretty much. (laughs) And then she just has to kind of work through it. And that started a year and a half ago. So that's exactly the stuff that you need to look out for. With arthritis and dental disease, it's always very subtle signs when they're early seniors, especially when they're early seniors, but also when they get into that super senior stage too, it's always really subtle. I have a list on my website. I have a chronic pain handout that you can go to, okay. and mm-hmm. which I'll refer to you guys later, but there's- I'll put that in the wanna, show notes. Oh, sorry. That, yeah, that's oh, yeah, I'll put that in the show notes for everybody. Awesome. It kind of lists out a bunch of really subtle signs to look out for for your dog. So for for example, if your dog's breath smells, that's a sign that they may have rotten teeth in there and they should probably get that dental cleaning done. Mm -hmm. If your dog used to chew on bones more than they do now, or Mm -hmm. you find blood on the bone more often than you did, you know, so that could be a sign of dental disease and dental pain as well. Or if your dog prefers soft food now over hard food, maybe it hurts Mm -hmm. to chew their hard food. And dogs, one of the amazing things about them is that they just adapt. In Boston's in particular, I think they really do too. I think it's very difficult to pick up on signs of pain in Boston Terriers. Like I've had dogs my whole life. And I've just known the general rule, like if a dog yelps, they're in extreme pain. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's to the point that your dog's limping, that really hurts Mm -hmm. them because Mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, kind of just trot along. So Mm -hmm. they're very subtle with the signs that they show. And so you really have to, as an owner, to be looking out for it, especially with our senior, our senior dogs. I just want to go back to the dental cleaning and everything. What do you think about like doing the dental bones? Is that even worth like, so as far as just relating myself to Bella and everything, we'd given her dental bones for a while. And then we just kind of stopped. We were brushing our teeth there for a while. We were doing it daily. And then it's just one of those things. Once you break a routine or a habit, it's easy to get out of it. But do you think dental bones would help? I guess necessarily wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I think they definitely can help. When you're looking for dental products, the thing to do is you want to look for, you want to go to a website that lists these VOHC approved dental treats. Okay. Because those dental treats that have this VOHC kind of status on them, mm-hmm. they've been reviewed by the boarded veterinary dentist group, and they have actually have some sort of evidence that suggests that they, in fact, do help with dental disease in the mouth, whether it's breaking down tartar or, or, or what it does. But you want to try to look for those VOHC approved dental treats to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Okay. When it comes down to it, nothing replaces brushing. You know, like as far as like at-home care, like nothing replaces brushing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but some guys are shy with their their heads, and so some owners are just mm-hmm. simply unable to do it. I think dental treats are a great option for for those pets, especially in between dental cleanings. We tried the long brush, the little you know the finger, <laughs> the finger stuff. brush, yeah, yeah, uh huh, the process. Yeah. But once Bella got used to it, it was easier. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you guys get in the routine, and it's hard because like we're we're all busy people, so fitting that into our lives is really difficult too. Mm-hmm. But they say that in order for brushing to even make a difference, you have yeah. to do it at least every other day. So if That's you're good just, day. yeah. Uh-huh. So if you're just doing it like once a week, it's just, you know, the tartar is going to build up still. Right. So at least every other day is the goal that we should mm-hmm. try to have. So knowing that dental disease, uh, so yeah, on your website, senior dog doc, I think it might've been a YouTube channel, knowing that dental disease in dogs in general is a problem in their old age. When would you recommend doing teeth cleanings. You want to do teeth cleanings on your dogs kind of throughout their life. And the amount of time between them really depends on how much tartar your pet builds up. And it varies by dog. Boston Terriers, I feel like they'll need them anywhere between one to three, every one to three years. 
to have those teeth scaled. Okay. And that helps them keep them longer. I recommend it based off of what the, the, the pet's mouth looks like when I see it on a physical exam. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just full disclosure, the vet did tell us maybe like four years ago that we needed them, you know, <laughs> the, the dental cleaning, but it was going to be like $750 which yeah. at the time, you know, I was still going to school and everything. I'm like, that's a lot of money. Just for everybody out there, you can definitely shop around because we ended up finding a vet that did it for $350. It will vary kind of based off of where you go. One thing that you'll want to do when you're looking for a place to get dentals done is you want to make sure you get those dental x-rays taken of the mouth too. Okay. Because a lot of times the teeth can, we can clean them up really nicely on the top, but the teeth can actually be that can be cracked roots or rotten rotten roots or evidence of infection in the bone mm -hmm. underneath. And you wouldn't know that without the dental x-rays. Okay. So that's one thing we really encourage to do on these guys. But do the x-rays. Just in general, what are some other things that we as, you know, 10 year old Boston owners, what could we do to help kind of prolong their life? So in general, things that you can do to prolong their life, I recommend once they become seniors that you go to the vet twice a year. Mm -hmm. You want to go every six months. And that sounds like a lot. So a lot of people are like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. Like, <laughs> but the issue is that when they're senior, so if we estimate, there's a little controversy about this, but the best way we have to estimate a dog's age is we say they age about roughly seven, seven human years every year. Right. right. Mm -hmm. That goes by. If you think about it for a senior pet, so someone, a senior pet might translate to a, a 60 year old. And if right. your 60 year old grandma didn't go to the vet, to their doctor, but every three years, that would just be quite frankly, just not enough times. They really should be going mm -hmm. annually to that, to see that. So we recommend every six months for these seniors because things come on really fast. If I don't see them every six months, I could miss an opportunity to kind of help them and to screen for diseases that we may otherwise pick up. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. So that's one really easy thing that you can do. And then the second thing that I recommend doing to help keep them healthy once they're seniors is to do annual blood work on them so okay. that we can establish we, trends. We do that. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can help establish trends for them and just start monitoring their values as they get older because things will start changing. Nearly every dog to some, a certain degree is prone to something like kidney disease. And Boston's are not excluded from that. Boston Terriers, in addition, they're actually prone to developing heart murmurs. I don't know if Bella has one or not. Does no, she have one? Not that I'm aware of. Good. I mean, the vet has never said that anything. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh -huh. So they're actually prone to heart murmurs. And one thing that these every six month exams allow me to do is they allow me to, to examine them and try to pick up on those. And those are really important for us to try to, to find. Mm -hmm. See, I wouldn't have thought like in humans, whenever I think heart murmur, I think of something that develops at a young age. So this is yeah. dogs that can develop and progress? Absolutely. There are murmurs that young pets can have, but mm -hmm. the majority of murmurs in Boston Terriers and other small breed dogs are going to happen as they get older. And the majority of those dogs are likely going to have a murmur due to mitral valve disease. So the mm -hmm. valve in the heart starts getting a little bit leaky. Okay. And it makes, it makes a noise that we can oftentimes hear when we're doing our physical exams on them. One thing we screen for. When people come to this YouTube channel, you know, they're thinking about getting a Boston for the first time. Now they got their eight week, maybe nine week old Boston. They go to the vet. What are some things that maybe a vet could screen for that would help them monitor their Boston over the years till they reach senior status? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot that they can do. So when you first get a puppy, your vet's going to do a thorough physical exam from head to toe. Mm -hmm. And that's going to really be helpful for these really young Boston Terrier puppies. So they'll look at their eyes really well, make sure there's nothing like cataracts there. They'll listen to their heart, make sure that sounds good. They'll check their knees. Boston mm -hmm. Terriers do tend to have patella luxations, mm -hmm. which can cause arthritis later on in life. So we always want to know about that. Some of those are going to be surgical in the future and others are not. It just all mm -hmm. depends kind of on how bad it is. So they'll do a thorough physical exam on them and just look for any sort of congenital abnormality that your puppy can have. Yeah, that's great. As far as basically kind of like bringing it back to where we were with senior dogs, what are some tips to maybe look for pain that they might be having? Are there signs that a dog might give? that a normal owner wouldn't be aware of? Signs of pain vary depending on kind of what's causing it. When I think about signs of pain, like arthritis is a really common one that they can have. And also neck or back pain can be pretty common in Boston Terriers. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. And I think Boston Terrier people do a really great job of this anyways, but they always have harnesses on them. For the most part, they I, I rarely see a Boston that's on a neck lead. Majority of them are actually on halters, <laughs> which is fantastic. 
because that helps support their back a little bit more. Signs of pain in dogs. Let's talk about signs of pain when it comes to orthopedic issues. So arthritis or neck or back. A pet, obviously, being slower to get up can be a sign of pain. Obviously, a limp. Maybe they can't jump onto the couch like they used to. They kind of fall off the first time they try, and then they try again. Those can be signs that things are possibly painful for them. Sometimes dogs with neck pain, they will kind of stand in in one spot and they don't really want to move because it hurts. Mm -hmm. And then they'll start moving. Or if their bowl is really low on the ground, they might kind of stand awkwardly over it like they want to eat, but something's hurting them. So those can all be Mm -hmm. signs of pain for them as far as orthopedic issues go. As soon as food's in the bowl, she's after it. It doesn't. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And so if she ever was to pause in front of it, that might give you just, you know, that would probably raise an eyebrow. You'd be like, what's going on? So that mm-hmm. could be a sign that something might not be feeling well or good in her body. The other place that we talked about before a little bit was dental disease. That's a really common place for chronic pain. And so we talked about things like a pet, maybe not wanting to chew their bone as much, a pet not wanting to eat hard kibble, but prefers the soft food, mm-hmm. a pet that might stare at their bowl for a second before they actually start eating it because maybe mm-hmm. they have a painful tooth they don't want to chew on. Mm-hmm. Those can all be signs of pain and then just bad breath. So I certainly will have dogs that will have rotten teeth and Boston's that will have rotten teeth in their mouth and they'll still eat their hard food. So they'll still eat their hard food. So it's really hard for an owner to pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And the only clue that, the, that really the owner had was that their breath kind of smells because they'll chew on one side of the mouth where they've got a few good teeth. Right. Mm-hmm. Dogs make do like they're amazing. They try to adapt as best they can. Yeah. And so because of that, it's so easy to miss chronic pain in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I was yeah. saying before this and everything, when I pick up Bella, like, yeah, it, it wasn't when she was younger. But now, like even in, you know, I grab both hands trying to pull her up. Yeah. But she'll yelp like something hurts. Yeah. And it's hard to say, has she ever had any episodes of, of neck pain or back pain that you know of? Not, um. Well, OK. Yeah. My wife, she was doing. Uh, I don't know, this is like five years ago doing some P90X whenever that was big. <laughs> and she was doing a kick and ended uh-huh. up kicking Bella because it was one of those back kicks yeah. and kicked Bella in her side. So that's the okay. only thing I can think of where that- it really hurt on that time. <laughs> I don't think you're I would. I don't think that she, hopefully, I'm sure Bella recovered from that just fine. I've done the same yeah. thing because uh-huh. the dogs always like to hang out whenever you're working out or doing yes. anything. Oh, they always yeah. look right there. <laughs> Especially when you're doing abs. That's when she wants to lay on your chest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they can definitely have episodes. So maybe it's something that something may be hurting her when she does that. So Mm. it'll be interesting to see if after you guys get her dental done, if that stops. I mean, it could Mm. be oral pain. It could be honestly anything. The 7th. That's whenever I see the vet. Just for what did you say? I see the vet on July 7th for annual. Okay. Well, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts and as far as the average age of a Boston Terrier, just because, you know, you being able to possibly look at the medical records and whatnot. Because there's a lot of different numbers out there when you go online. Because I always yeah. say an average age would be 12 to 15 years. I didn't know what you have seen in your clinic. Right. So I actually, before this interview, I went and I downloaded all of our Boston Terrier records at our clinic just to kind that's of go awesome. through them and give you guys kind of more value, hopefully. Yeah, that's so fantastic. On average, the average lifespan of a Boston Terrier is usually between 10 and 13 years of age. Okay. So really the guys that make it to 14 or 15, that's fantastic. And maybe we might be shifting that way more so now mm-hmm. we just, pets are living longer and longer. You know, we have, yeah. they've got better care than ever. They've got better nutrition than ever. And so they're really living longer mm-hmm. than, than they ever have. So usually between 10 and 13 is kind of when I, 10 and 13 and a half is probably what I would say the average lifespan is for a Boston Terrier. Close so, Bella's ears on that one. Cover her ears. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. As far as someone be- wanting to reach out to you or check out your website, what are some good contact methods uh, to reach out to you? Yeah. So they can find me at seniordogdoc.com mm-hmm. or I have a podcast also that you can find on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify. And it's called okay. Senior Dog Revolution. And we cover all things senior dogs. Okay. So if you have an older Boston, you should definitely check it out. We'll cover a lot of issues that will pertain to them, especially. Okay. And I do want to mention now, you did create that awesome PDF that you're going to put yeah. on the website that people can check out, basically yes. covering all the questions here that we did during the interview. I'll put that in the show notes. So anyone listening that wants to check that out, you can go click on that now. Yes, I think you guys will. Lo- I think you guys will love it. So I created a PDF that is really Boston Terrier specific for you, and it's specific to the senior Boston Terriers. And I go through things such as things that you can be doing to help them live their best life. 
is one category. And then I also list a couple diseases that Boston's may be prone to getting. And then lastly, I have some places where Boston Terriers experience chronic pain and some signs to look out for on that PDF. And I think you guys will love it. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. Keep that nailed somewhere for Bella. Yeah. And then give my wife the sad news that you just mentioned. She's not going to make it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her that. Bella's going to make it way longer. She'll exceed well, my, my, my expectations. I'm sure of it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the YouTube channel and everything. I really appreciate it. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. It was yeah. fun being here. You're welcome. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, if you want to see more episodes like this, be sure to hit subscribe so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. There's going to be more like this coming out. If you want to get in touch with Dr. Tarantino, her information is going to be in the show notes below so you can check out her podcast that she just rolled out with. And she's actually coming out with a book that's geared towards helping senior dogs. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be in the show notes as well. Otherwise, until next time, life is better with a Boston.